Okay, so thanks everybody for coming to, I can hardly believe it, but it's our second last class this semester already. Only one more lecture uh, this semester um, on the history of the Canada Spires Club of Canada. So uh, next week's lecture uh, uh, will be about that. Um, we do have a new classroom for next semester in the Clear Hue building. I brought lots of pamphlets and stuff for uh, people here to uh, take with them if they don't have it already. It's just in the Clear Hue uh, across the, the way, so it's not too far away from 420. That's kind of important, but we do have to move to a new building for the first time in three years, so that would be kind of impressed. Um, yeah, so today uh, we have uh, uh, one of our uh, kind of ongoing uh, guest speakers, I guess, along with uh, Gail and, and Bill Finley from Hempel Company. Uh, Jason is helping me out with uh, a couple of different lectures in the areas that he specializes in, um, being uh, the growing of cannabis, which he'll do next semester, and uh, which actually, honestly, if if you want to really get into it, he's done a show, if you watch YouTube at all, there's a whole bunch of things. Uh, the A to Z of Growing Medical Cannabis is the title of one of the series that he's done. So cramming it into a half hour lecture uh, in any way will be a challenge for him. He'll only be able to cover a bit of it, honestly. But uh, today he's also talking, or talking, I should say, about uh, Health Canada and the medical marijuana access regulations and uh, giving us uh, history and, and the effect of them. And because he's had so much uh, personal and professional experience dealing with the issue, um, I really don't want to take up uh, too, too much time today, um, except to say that, uh, yeah, I guess uh, today you're, you're going to find out uh, the, the legal way to help yourself with medical marijuana or others. And uh, next week, I'll tell you how we can it the more illegal way. Um, and that's, uh, I guess, how it's going to go. So here's uh, Jason uh, with uh, uh, his story uh, and the story of uh, Health Canada and the MMA. Good luck, man. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jason Wilcox. As Ted said, um, I'm a federal exemptee. I have been now for, uh, this is now my fifth year of being federally licensed here in Canada to both cultivate and possess uh, marijuana. Um, just because I like marijuana, I think, and because of the fact that I grow it like I do, I thought that I should show a couple of things. One would be what I'm legally allowed to carry. One would be what I'm legally allowed to carry. One would be what I'm legally allowed to carry. Okay? And add a little essential oils to the room. Um, just because I like cannabis. So, I'm going to lighten the light bit a little bit. And, um, really, uh, a little bit of history about myself. I am HIV positive. I have been for 15 years. Um, my battle began, you know, when I was a 21-year-old kid, you know, who thought he knew everything and uh, went ahead and did what I did. And that led me eventually on to antiretroviral treatment, which eventually led me to medicinal use of cannabis and how to counter some of the additional big pharma drugs that they would have me take. So that's kind of... Uh, it's really been a driving force behind uh, my activism because the more I dug into treatment information in relation to HIV AIDS, um, in which I am an activist. I mean, I still, here in Victoria, um, I fight the papers for HIV rights for parents who fight stigma. I have a nine-year-old daughter. She's here today. Um, you know, I fight on the HIV front. And I also fight on the medical and cannabis front. Um, to me, the bigger lie of the two is the medical cannabis one because the other one remains a mystery. So uh, that's a little bit about me um, in my background. Getting into, uh, getting into Health Canada itself, I think we need to start with a gentleman named Terry Parker, who you're just gonna have to bear with me because I'm not, really not used to this uh, laptop mouse thing here. But uh, a gentleman named uh, Terry Parker, back, there's quite an interesting story about this gentleman. Um, I'm sorry the picture isn't that good, but um, this gentleman here uh, was the first gentleman to actually win the right to not only cultivate cannabis, most people know him for winning the right, the Section 56 exemption, that grants you a card, which I thought I brought one here with me to show. Yeah, which grants you one of these, right? Which is a medical marijuana access card. Uh, and gives you the right to grow your personal uh, medicine. Now the issue with this um, for Parker was that he didn't, he had two battles. Back in 1987, a lot of people forget, he's the one who won the right for us to 
smoke it for medicinal purposes, only not to the higher court levels or certainly not to the constitutional level. And, uh, the, and rather they just dismissed the charges and said we can never charge Terry Parker again for possession. It kind of dropped the issue for Mr. Parker. You know, and then in, uh, I believe it was 1998, the police received a call in 1997, they received a call and he had some plants on his balcony. So they decided to raid his Toronto apartment and hit him again. So Terry, of course, got on and did his advocacy and did what he needed to do, eventually leading to what is, as I said, now known as a Section 56 exemption uh, with the Medical Marijuana Access Division of Health Canada. Um, some of the key things, uh, in the 1961 treaty, um, this, I'm going to be kind of jumping around a bit here, but really the 1961 treaty and also the World Health Organization has recognized that you have a right to your own autonomy, your body, and what you choose to put in. And with cannabis being proven safe, it's very hard to have people turn around and say that it's somehow going to harm you. And the World Health Organization has said you have that right. And that right has been upheld here in Canada by the Supreme Court. And they've said you have a constitutional right to choose cannabis as your therapy. The problem is, is there's a gateway issue which comes down to the doctors, and um, a lot that's happened with uh, a lot that's happened with with these various cases from Parker to uh, again for those of you that didn't know about this treaty, um, I'll be coming back to it a little bit later um, and how it relates to the Hitzig case because it's really what the government hid behind after Hitzig to uh, to reinstate their one to one ratio. Um, kind of bouncing around here because I'm off here on these uh, topics, but. Here's a picture of Jim Wakeford. Now the funny thing is this gentleman, a lot, what a lot of people don't know about this gentleman, and uh, God bless his soul because he's no longer with us, but uh, this gentleman was an HIV positive individual who um, was another forefront activist. He decided to live out his days fighting for what he believed was his right. And so do I. And he fought and he won. And he won without conviction. He was the first Section 56 exemption issued in Canada. Now while Terry Parker was being appealed, the lower court said, uh-uh, we aren't going to touch this, this is already won. So the issue, Mr. Wakeford, is right. And, uh, and this didn't come without, uh, would come with it, it come without a, lot of, uh, a lot of questions because, of course, now the CDSA had to address, um, and the government, Health Canada, had to now address, well, how are we going to deal with this new legal marijuana? And it's unfortunate that a lot of people see it as being legal um, because for, for medical purposes, that is. Um, it's very unfortunate because uh, with both these gentlemen having passed and, uh, and fought hard for, um, for the right for us to use cannabis, we currently only have 2,432 people licensed um, as of February 2008. Um, it's a little staggering statistics. And, um, and these gentlemen certainly, uh, you know, they certainly changed the CDSA and made the CDSA look at certain issues such as, uh, as resin and, uh, and various other aspects. For instance, I may be a medical licensee that can sit here and hold up 300 grams or three quarters of a pound of marijuana in front of you, okay, and completely pack this around and not be concerned about conviction. That's not an issue. Um, however, give me a cannabis cookie and theoretically I could be convicted for breaching the regulations. Whether that's a conviction or whether that's going to be a toss out of court and just me and slap on the hands because I'm a medical patient or whether they're going to leave me alone. More probable they're going to leave me alone. Point is the regulations are full of holes and we're going to try and get into some of these as I, uh, as I go through it. Um, really the numbers speak for themselves. I've brought a lot of statistics with me today um, to talk about. I, to, uh, uh, I served on a national steering committee for cannabis and therapy for persons living with HIV AIDS. This committee um, was formed and uh, it had Health Canada officials, it had the manager of the Medical Marijuana Access Division sitting at the table, had uh, other key activists who are signed on to this public document like Mr. Phil Lucas, Mr. Eric Nash, uh, and so forth, who, uh, sat on this, uh, who sat on this committee, um, uh, Lynn Vallejo, who, uh, another tremendous activist. Um, these people sat on this committee and we analyzed for 18 months with the number one lawyer in this country, Mr. Alan Young. For 18 months, we looked at the medical marijuana access regulations, which govern this program that gives me this license. Now, you guys might think it's all good that I'm packing this weed around and that, but uh, at the same time, my home is constantly under threat of being invaded by police. I'm not registered with them. So they get a heat signature for my hydro, you know, of course the police can't show up now with all a bunch of new rooms, but uh, regardless, city officials can still come and disrupt my home. The Ministry of Children and Family can still come and try and say that I'm somehow an unfit father because of my choice of medicine. Um, of course, they would have to reword it as such a word as neglect. Um, these are the federal.
authority 